Good morning and uh, welcome to CPO Innovation Live. My name is Razoom Rajan and today, as you all know, we have an extremely pressing topic and I'm very, very excited to welcome all of you to have a conversation on the black swan of 2020, COVID-19 versus retail supply chains. Indian retail industry has more than 15 million traditional and modern retailers. Retail employs 40 to 50 million people directly of which modern trade employs more than 6 million Indians equaling to almost 12% of the total retail consumption of the country. Retail contributes around 40% to India's consumption and that makes 10% to India's GDP. The lockdown, as you all know, implemented by government to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the country has greatly affected retail business. Most stores, except uh, stores selling essential food and grocery have been shut across the country. Non-grocery retailers are reporting about 90 to 100% reduction in sales. I, I, I could say zero revenue altogether. Alternatively, retailers of essential items as well are facing losses as they aren't allowed to sell non-essential items, which would bring them higher margins. 85% of costs are fixed costs for all the retailers, which is putting several financial pressures on retailers. The industry is experiencing severe liquidity challenges, which can lead to large scale unemployment. The cash inflow of the industry has come to a standstill while the fixed operating costs remain intact. Now concerned by the state of affairs, today's discussion will aim at bringing forward an actionable prescription for all of us in retail to navigating successfully the way forward amid lockdown 3.0 and beyond. I think all of us as businesses and individuals are battling the impact of shortage of inventories and this has been a rough road that degraded over the past four months. Crisis test and reveal true leaders. COVID-19 by any definition is the perfect storm. The pandemic has plunged the world in a state of limbo and the reality is that no one was ready for it. The biggest shock troubling people across is, is the uncertainty. Nobody knows what the long-term impact will be and it's in this cauldron that leaders emerge. In today's discussion, we want to zoom out a little bit and take a look at the bigger picture and the new normal in the future? And how will it be defined? And what will be the role of retail supply chain leaders to keep the organizations ahead of the arrived changes amid coronavirus? In today's panel discussion, we have the privilege to have with us Madhu Natesan, CPSCM, Divisional Vice President Merchandising Operations at Hudson Bay Company. Madhu has global leadership, work experiences in India and US, and expertise in managing global talent. Madhu has created and implemented many transformational projects resulting in top and bottom line improvements. Welcome, Madhu. Thank you, Razum. Also joining us, we have Dr. Anil, a Senior Vice President, Retail Planning and Supply Chain, Landmark Group. Anil is an engineering and retail planning and supply chain professional. He's passionate about transforming businesses into more value-driven, innovative, and profitable organizations. He brings strong work ethics, greater ownership of end-to-end -end business activities. Welcome, Anil. Thank you, Rizun. Thank you. Glad to be here. Today, we are also joined by Bala Krishnan, uh, who's a senior engineering director for the supply chain technology group at Lewis India. At Lewis, Bala oversees the supply chain IT work driven from the Bangalore Center. Bala has been in the technology industry primarily in the retail space, working in areas of the supply chain, merchandising, and e-commerce, where he's helped build and operate some of the world's largest e-commerce platforms. Welcome, Bala. Thanks, Razum. Glad to be here. Alongside, we also have Karthikeyan Vishnu, is the COO of Mr. DIY in India. Mr. DIY, as you all know, is, has now grown to become the largest home improvement retailer with 1,000 stores in Southeast Asia, uh, which serves more than 188 million customers daily. Uh, technology and innovation plays an important part in Karthikeyan's market approach strategy, and he has been, in the last few years, launching various pioneering brands in the country. Welcome, Kartikeyan. Thank you, Razum. Pleasure to be here. Moving on to our next panelist, we have Virendra Sharma, Associate Vice President and Head Supply Chain at Jockey, India. Over the last 20 years, Virendra has handled multiple assignments across different domains of supply chain in Jockey. Uh, Stanley Black & Decker, uh, Intel, and then United Biscuits, and even Colgate Palmolive. Welcome, Virendra. Okay, thank you. 
So thank you so much, Madhu, Anil, Bala, Karthikeya, and Virendra. We have a packed agenda today to cover. As I said, we'd be zooming out a little bit, and that zooming out will be by design, because we believe that at times we need to zoom out to take the bigger picture, so that we can zoom in again and take the right decision to understand how aligned you are and we are with the larger picture and the larger objective. So that's it. We'll be focusing on that future with picture. and also invite the panelists to not only help us design but also to help us think through what will be our roles as we go along lockdown 3.0 and ahead now before we start i'm going to just request the team to share the screen for a couple of questions for the audience to answer you can participate live in this survey so you need to go to menti.com on your browser i repeat that is menti.com m e n t i dot com and when you go to menti dot com there will be a code that you need to enter to answer. There are two questions and the code is six two five two one. I repeat, the code is six two five two one. I request the team to please share the screen so that the panelists can see the results. Perfect. Thank you so much. So the question we are asking here is how many number of months what's the time frame required that you think uh, will get back the retail business back to normalcy 0 to 3 months 3 to 6 months 6 to 12 months or beyond 12 months Madhu, as you see uh, the results, any thoughts? I think even on the global surveys, I think the results are more or less hinging towards uh, you know the three to six months period right now. I think McKinsey did a survey for North American consumers, and about you know thirty five percent you know of the population believes that you know uh, the economy and retail as a business should you know recover in the next three to six months. The pessimism, pessimistic uh, group, which believes that is going to take greater than twelve months, is luckily under fifteen percent today. So the survey is kind of representing a very similar trend, uh, and hopefully this is going to be the case in reality. A lot of people are saying that it's going to take six to twelve months, and let's see the final results as we have uh, the entire audience uh, participate. Meanwhile, I, Anil, any comments from you looking at the survey results so far? Um. I would agree with Madhu actually because uh, I think you know uh, the uh, the earliest recovery signs we can see is perhaps during uh, the two of the largest months in Indian retail, which is uh, October and November, the Shara and Diwali period. So that's the earliest sign of recovery, and I think I'm sure it's going to take uh, up to 12 months because we need to do a lot of course correction, uh, you know, between now and probably the end of uh, March, which is our end of financial year for India, Indian perspective. I understand. The majority of people uh, are with six to twelve months uh, in returning back to normalcy, which brings us near the Christmas this year and the time after that. Uh, Karthikeya, any thoughts from you? What do you think? So I look at a short-term recovery, which will happen in three to six months. However, a long-term, what we look at is the six to twelve months. Uh, as Anil mentioned, yes, we have. Uh, major festive season so that is uh, diwali is on november 14 so that's the time followed by christmas when we can see that there is going to be some rise in the shopping at the same time 3 yeah, months is good enough time for the consumers to be comfortable with the entire experience or the newness in the buying experience that lot of retailers are working in terms of the hygiene uh, having ease of checkouts you know giving them a comfort Shopping experience post COVID fear that everyone is carrying. All right, uh, let's move on to next question, uh, which is uh, what people consider COVID nineteen to be. Do you think it is a disruptor? Do you think it is a creator, or do you think it is a disruptor? You have to use the same method to go back to menti.com and use the same code to answer. Or you are, if you're already there on the browser, you can just. 
submit your answer virendra any thoughts from you looking at the survey virendra are you there uh, yes yes resume can you hear me yep yes yes very very clear what do you think covid 19 is a disruptor creator or destructor and i agree to the survey that obviously this has disrupted uh, the industry right uh, especially the retail one is uh, mostly hit in, in the big way because the industry was struggling just before this uh, corona crisis has happened but at the same time i slightly basically i have a middle path i think it will also open a lot of opportunity to basically come out with, with newer strategy to run the business to improve the supply chain to look at the gap right because i think is in supply chain industry we have always been busy into basically doing the day to day fighting right this is a time for us to be to become a little bit more strategic go back to the basic and solve those fundamental problems about which we can talk about in the today seminar a little bit later so i think it is a mix of definitely it is a disruptor but also to throw opportunity for basically creating some new technology creating new strategy which will overall help the industry in their very long way okay uh bala any any thoughts from you yeah so certainly this is something which you don't wish for right but uh some of these disruptive things do happen and if you look at it historically whether it has been previous pandemics or world wars we've always figured out a way to come out of it and always figured out and reached to new heights so i would expect that humans as a society will always find a way to figure out these kind of situations and emerge stronger so i am always an optimistic although i wish that something like this just had not happened but some of these things if you view it historically does happen be it wars for mines pandemics so i am positive about how humans as a whole would respond to this and i'm sure be it through technology be it through our ingenuity i'm sure we will find a way to bounce back and this too shall pass is the way i look at it sounds good this too shall pass nice thoughts to be very optimistic about it uh any any of the panelists who believe uh, covid-19 has been a creator i think if i have to add um, on i think it's a combination of all the three you know i think the survey results kind of indicated that's so why i'm with all the respondents i think a lot of consolidation is going to happen which means it's a destructive in a way uh, i'm sure at the end of this a lot of new white space opportunities are going to come up so in a way it's going to create a ton of you know startup ideas new ways of doing business new ways of interacting with the customers um, and at the same time it's going to be a disruptor you know uh, businesses are forced to you know think different avenues and different ways of interacting with the customers and doing business so it's a combination of all three uh, in uh, various degrees depending on where you are as an organization anil you were saying something yeah i guess um, yeah for sure I remember i mean we also had this discussion previously obviously it's a, it's a combination of all three and then i guess uh, it it goes back to the basics of you know uh, your humanity or uh, you know our our uh, life as a you know as evolved uh, survival of the fittest has always been actually the formula for you know every business every part of life right so i guess um, uh, the key thing is particularly in retail and then retail supply chain you know aspect of it if you are close to the customer if you are close to your consumer actually views if you can actually have your ear grounded in fact you know keep your eyes and ears open so to say i think you definitely can uh, you know uh, create a, a far better opportunity uh, with this covid in fact yes there are some short term uh, you know shortcomings in there you know there are some obstacles and all that but then if you really stay focused on your journey with your consumer i think you definitely can create a far better uh, business proposition that's my firm feeling yeah sounds good uh moving on to our next uh, uh, area of discussion that is the q and a uh, i want to start with a definition a very basic definition of uh, retail supply chain uh, and what differentiates so the differentiating factor of retail supply chain management 
from other supply chain management is simply in the volume of product movement and the fast moving nature of the products of the retail industry by this simple definition i'm sure we're able to understand why the corona virus has appended retail supply chains the most now before we move on to understand the technicalities i'd want to ask our panelists how did the news break in retail supply chains what was your reaction upon hearing it's a pandemic a global hit and and what have been the humanitarian and operational impacts of the outbreak that you felt at the forefront of your on ground system madhu your opening thoughts please cool i think i think the first uh, reaction was a shock as is even happening during a live span um and then mm-hmm. you know immediately we had to get into a war room kind of a scenario to understand what does this mean for us you know we were staring at revenue declines uh, from a retail and a supply chain specific you know huge stock pile up and uh, what do we do with that and uh, you know for those of you all uh, you know on the call i'm from hudson bay it's a north american uh, retailer uh, we believe in our heritage we just celebrated our 350th anniversary you know very few companies that would celebrate a 350th anniversary uh, and uh, from a north american retail standpoint heavily seasonal right you have your very specific you know spring and fall season and uh, we had piled up on our spring inventory and every retailer right and uh, you know clearly from that initial outbreak a lot of our survey respondents also indicated that is going to take about you know 3 to 6 months which means you essentially you complete your spring and you're into fall and the big question is what do you do with your spring merchandise i think that's been where we spend a lot of time on and a lot of time every retailer spending in united states is what do we do with a current pile up of you know spring inventory and i think sometime during this conversation i'll also kind of give you snippets of uh, what some of the retailers have uh, you know adopted in terms of a strategy to mitigate this risk Anil, uh, any thoughts from you? Well, um, I mean, this is again. I think, as Mazu said, it just came as a shock because you know we just had a family holiday in U.S. and then uh, we were end up, uh, you know, coming back to India in you know, via Hong Kong and Singapore, and we, this mm-hmm. was in mid January, and we were actually just looking at uh, you know our airport, you know, staff, you know, scanning people, you know, for the temperature and all that. Then we realized, okay, here go, you know, here they go again, another H one N one, or you know, a swine flu or whatever. But then. when we actually started business say let's say end of january or early part of february we were talking about oh there is some corona i believe happening you know in china and so on before you know it actually ended up in bangalore i mean you know one one of our neighbors you know kid who goes to a school i mean somebody had actually the corona virus there so before even you kind of you know you uh, kind of you know uh, uh, you know you just actually you know uh, wing it actually had ended up you know in bangalore and in india and then once it came to india it was like you know it was taking a you know supersonic speed before anybody could act i think had a huge uh, probably uh, you know presence felt all across so what did that mm-hmm. do to our business obviously the you know if you imagine retail business as a you know train track the train started stopping the you know before you knew everything came to a standstill and there was no room for you to move as madhu said inventory piled up and store started closing down we started actually having social uh, distancing impacting and so on and even the online was closed it was like it came like a third impact and uh, you know before you knew before you could even act uh, probably you know it it came as a big uh, shock actually having said that there are always you know about 10% or 20% of your business actually because you are in retail business there is lot of dynamic uh, dynamics actually are there is lot of volatility there all along uh, in the retail some parts mm-hmm. of business we were able to kind of you know quickly take control and kind of you know started saying entire value chain we started saying hey guys there seems to be some unprecedented actually you know phenomenon happening can we be all on caution so immediately started forming bcps and started actually getting into some contingency mode and all that but uh, yes it came as a shock and then uh, you know initial reactions were hey this is something very new it's a war situation so we better you know uh, get get into it you know let's address it you know right away is a kind of you know approach that everybody took right from our md ceo all the way to the you know entire uh, you know front end teams and so on kartika and any thoughts from you well uh, for us uh, it uh, didn't come in as a surprise because we had uh, we have stores globally so uh, rather than reacting we could respond to the situation and what we did is we took 48 hours uh, to you know get into action uh, 
to streamline the entire IT process so that people can comfortably work from home. We did create the scenarios as to how uh, we created a, a base case scenario, what could be the worst case scenario and what's a good scenario, basis which how we need to move and took all the necessary steps uh, wherein uh, none of the operations is hampered. Definitely, we had to shut the stores. Uh, but we looked at what is it that we can do uh, once the stores are shut, where it's not open to the retail consumer, whether can we go ahead, do a stock take. So, uh, Razum, I would say that, yes, first and foremost, it was uh, how do we respond in terms of creating the infrastructure such that in this scenario, if it's a 15-day or 30-day or 45-day lockdown or a 60-day, for that matter, even if it goes beyond that, how do we keep the ball rolling? How do we keep the business running? That was the thought that each one of us got into discuss. Uh, we had a lot of support from our headquarters, uh, a lot of direction from our headquarters, and that continues to have. The next thing that we did was to connect with each and every employee of us. So, because in this scenario, uh, with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of information floating around, the clarity of information, the clarity of thought, and the panic which was there, it, it was very much important to give that comfort to each and every employee that we have. So we got into action in terms of connecting with each and every employee uh, through the video calls, through the phone calls, each and every department have been assigned or assigned that role and connecting with each and every one and giving that comfort as to how we will move. Yes, uh, we were in the, and we are still in the don't know, don't know domain. So giving rise to a lot of transformation that happens when you are, when you know that you know, when you know that you don't know, and when you don't know that you don't know. So we use this opportunity to create a lot of transformation in this space, right? From a training, uh, you know, in terms of selling skills, that's, that's where we had planned. So what we did is we planned well, and we continue to do that and revisit our plan. You said this created a situation of unconscious incompetence, but uh, I think with the right strategy and planning in place, you pulled it off altogether very well. Virendra, any thoughts from you? Uh, yeah, so, so Rajum, I think the news of Corona did not come to basically us or I think to most of us basically in one go, right? I think, but the, but the, but, but the, the impact of this at different point in time was definitely a shock. For example, in our case, uh, we deal with a lot of Chinese suppliers, right? So we started actually coming to know about the impact, what happened in Wuhan in early January, mid January, we started to know. And there was a Chinese New Year, right? I think most of you would be aware, right? Because of yes. Chinese New Year actually closed for two, three weeks. So there is a supply yeah. store stopped. And then immediately after that, there is a huge supply. So we started actually getting feelers from our Chinese vendor that there is going to be impact. There is uncertainity. We, we, they, they, they were not committal. They said that could be delays. So our first approach was to figure out that how can we actually mitigate the supply risk, right? What all supplies which we are sourcing from China, how can we actually source it from India or from other uh, sources like Vietnam, Indonesia? So we were working on that strategy. And we did achieve success, right? We did achieve success at that point in time and we tried to mitigate some risk, assuming that the China may not come actually, I mean, actually the way China has come up, it's a, it's a very pleasant surprise. We didn't anticipate that at that point in time, the type of magnitude which you are seeing. What we were not sure like many others that what, whether this impact, what will be the impact of this in India? I mean, obviously the type of situation which we are in, we never anticipated. So. Uh, as we came in February, we started actually feeling that, yes, now it can be a global pandemic and the impacts will start going to the different countries. So obviously the first, uh, our first approach was to look at our inventories and basically look at, assess the realistic demand, which is not an easy thing in today's environment, right? All of us know one of the biggest challenges is the supply chain leaders, what we figure out, what we face today is to figure out what will be the uh, realistic demand. So basically, I think uh, we kept on actually looking at the, basically as the situation evolved, we look, we kept on actually revising our demand number. And basically, I think uh, we, we were in a better position. Uh, we have actually uh, invested in uh, people, process and technology so, so that we can actually respond to demand changes in a more proactive way. Uh, as we know, right, the planning in the supply chain world, planning has been always a challenge, but a bigger challenge is basically replan and how much what is our ability to replan? So we uh -huh. we 
decent capability. We relied on that, and based on these different demand signals, we actually came out with our supply plan. What should be our capacity situation? Uh, what should be our split between in-house and outsourcing? So, and then, as I said, right, this did not happen in one go. We did multiple iteration. I think that's what Karthikeyan was also. Okay. This is our supply situation, and then trying to be realistic. But I think most accurate response came after this, uh, just one or two weeks before lockdown. We really anticipated that what will be the mm -hmm. demand, and uh, we came out with a new projection and tried to basically realign this uh, entire situation so as to basically minimize the impact on our working capital, as well as basically uh, not to be in a position uh, to basically face a stop out. Mm -hmm. Now, now before I go on to uh, Bala to ask uh, his views, I, I want to pick up a question from uh, one of our audience. Uh, Mr. Amar, Ch Amar Chaudhary, I'm so sorry, he, he's asking uh, that working capital, and my question will be to Anil, uh, working capital has got completely dried up and we're sitting on huge pile of inventory. The question is, how are we going to handle this, this immediately, Anil? Well, uh, this is probably the number one problem for most retailers dried up working capital because your tilt is closed. I mean, nothing is coming through actually the, the stores or your retail channels and so on. And then on the other side, you know, your inventory train, it took some time to stop. It's a train. It can't be just, you know, stop just like, a, you know, a Yamaha break or something like that. So you actually, ha you know, took some time for you to actually kind of, you know, bring it to a halt. Therefore, obviously, the inventory pileup has happened. Now, what is actually a smart retailer trying to do? While cash flow how do you do the cash flow without getting some cash infusion i mean it's a, it's a huge issue right so therefore what one of the you know uh, um, quite, a, quite a few the smart retailers what we actually we have done including us is that we have immediately gone back and you know uh, uh, we were talking about replanning right so we have probably done mm -hmm. multiple or you know iterations of replants in fact and then you know as soon as we open which is what is happening right now right so what is that we want to actually you know uh, kind of start offering what does consumer need so what is what is that you know being a fashion retailer i mean my prime customer is actually she it is a lady of the household it is a young lady it is a young mom you know who's our prime customer what is her need so trying to kind of prioritize some of those things and trying to keep some of those things ready be it online or offline actually one of the you know some of the smarter actually inventory planning is what we had to do quickly we had to get back to our vendors also saying that hey, yeah there is actually an unprecedented actually problem so therefore so let's, I mean, we are all in it in this together. So they don't worry, actually. Uh, we are still going to, you know, keep up all the promises or, you know, we'll honor our commitments and so on. But then there is a time differential. So how can we, you know, space out our actually further inventory inverts and things like that? In the meantime, even to manage the cash flow, actually, so how can we kind of, you know, put on hold some of the expenditures such as, uh, you know, your fixed expenditure? Because, you know, we wanted to honor our wages our salaries and then make sure that immediate payments wherever it was required get to honor some of those things but then we also put kind of delay for example how a bank is offering you to defer the emis and so on for three months or, you know first quarter second quarter whatever similarly we wanted to actually make sure that immediate impact onto the cash is you know kind of better managed so to say so can we actually do a 15 day payment to 30 day payment or a 40 day payment so there are actually number of such things that we had to adopt and I think, you know, a couple of the, you know, biggest things that we have also looked at is uh, obviously inventory, we couldn't do much, manpower, we couldn't do much. We had to do something with the rentals and fixed expenditure. So this is what we have actually gone back to the land arts and then said, okay, you know, can we pay you? Can we have some arrangement in payments? You know, can we do some, uh, you know, can we get some rebate? Can we actually not pay this fixed expenditure in fact, because there is a lockdown, therefore there is no expenditure and so on. So there is a, there are actually a variety of, uh, uh, you know, measures that we have been, even now actually it's going on. I think today morning I just saw the, you know, uh, the press read uh, saying that 20% of, uh, you know, space in the malls is going to become vacant. Because there are people who just can't afford. But then large businesses, if you make a win-win a kind of a situation for you and your partners, I mean, this is what I was talking about, truthfulness, being truthful actually with your partners as well as your consumers. If you are able to manage that journey, Maybe deferring some of these things mm -hmm. or holding on to them, some of them, you know, that's on one side. And there are certain expenditure on some of the capex expenditure is clearly put on hold, which means, you know, whether it's a quarter one, quarter two, or until, until a such time uh, where I can afford that. Because let's understand, 
we are going to probably we have actually gone back to the years in fact in our overall in our top line bottom line you know structure so if i'm generating a revenue of 2016 17 how can or can i afford a 2020 org structure 2020 cost structure that's the whole question yeah. so there are a lot of answers in that itself so that's what we are managing it <laughs> All right. I hope that answers to Amar. Uh, we, we move on to our question from Bala. Bala, how did the news break out to you, and what was your uh, initial response? Yeah, personally, it was pretty eventful, and in fact, I exactly remember the date, March fourth, and I was in Mumbai attending a conference, and that mm-hmm. night I was supposed to fly to New York, and then that's where uh, cases from Washington and New York started trickling in, and we had our initial few cases in Bangalore. and literally i made a decision 3 4 hours before the flight to cancel so that's that's how i personally kind of came into the bandwagon right and uh, obviously we know cases from 10 and 20s went into thousands sometimes uh, when it is 20, 10 and 20 cases we treat it as a tra- tragedy and then when it goes so hundreds and thousands we treat it as statistics that's the unfortunate bit uh, but uh, um some of the things we had to do a quick uh, background on lows lows is the second largest home improvement retailer in the world right right and we operate out of uh, us and canada uh and we started getting initial indications from the government given the kind of business we are in we are going to be an essential retailer so our first response was essentially dealing with governments and as we know in us it's a significantly federal government and what is decided at a national level not necessarily will be applicable in every state right so we had to spend a lot of time with state attorneys in terms of understanding even though we would be operational what are the terms and conditions how do we make it uh, safe for everyone right so that's that was how we started dealing with this crisis and then of course Uh, the second bit was once we had to operate our stores and therefore the supply chain uh, the immediate thing we had to take care was about our associates right and when uh, a large part of the nation is staying at home to kind of give a confidence to our associates that we will be operating safely was a significant uh, operation in itself right just to give a context uh, lows has 300000 associates out of which 280000 associates either work in our stores or in supply chain so we had a simple formula to kind of communicate this what we call as the 3s right and in that order safety first then support each other and then manage the supply chain that is the order in which we said we will manage this entire thing um so that was about the associates and I, i'm sure we will get uh, time to talk about many other things which we did to the associates including kind of giving them couple of months of bonuses increasing their daily wages um and more importantly this is one thing which i wanted to highlight right we still kept uh, the community at the heart of what we were doing uh, one of the first things which we did was kind of completely stop retailing the n95 masks right and all of the stocks which we had about the n95 mask were donated to the community in fact uh, lows mm-hmm. kind of pledged uh, 100 million dollars worth of equipments to the various community uh, members primarily healthcare right so that mm-hmm. that's how things came to life uh, in lows right we I mean, we are blessed to be an essential retailer and serve the community but we are taking that responsibility very seriously thank you so much uh moving on to our next question and and be, even before again we we go towards uh, getting solutions let me ask each of our panelists again to share their their thoughts on what has been the the key challenges and pain points that you contended with during the first 30 days of the lockdown if you were to say say and express your message in just three words what would be the the three problems we first 30 days after lockdown let's start with madhu I think the first one is just inventory still you know i think we immediately 
you know, got into a situation to try and see of our entire spring inventory, you know, how much can we recode and carry it into fall? That was the first action. Then uh, in this situation, we have to also, you know, increase our partnership with our vendor community. So we started actively engaging with our vendor community to see, is there an opportunity to take some of this back or to swap it with, you know, spring inventory? So it's a win-win mm -hmm. and uh, you have to collaborate in a situation like this. And then the last thing that we did was where the first two options were not applicable you know should we even mm -hmm. carry some of this into the into 2021 season you know of course mm -hmm. you have to look at your you know margins of those products really well because your cost of occupancy can be very high i think that was the first thing that we did uh, second thing mm -hmm. I think was, you know, our consumer engagement. How do we continue to engage with our customers, right? Are there other streams of revenue that we can generate? So we started looking at digital very closely to see how can we continue to engage with our customers in that channel, right? Um, and again, I think in a scenario like this, you have to be very careful in terms of what you're marketing to your consumer because very quickly you can be perceived as being non-sensitive. Uh, and as you know, Saks, Hudson Bay, we sell, you know, very high-end designer, you know, products which have very A you are we made a conscious mm -hmm. effort not to market some of that we started marketing things that you that we thought was essential and again through consumer surveys so for example we quickly realized the consumers activities have shifted uh, to, to to more indoor exercises uh, you know they started uh, you know tapping into a lot of streaming exercises uh, streaming videos etc so quickly what okay. we did is and and another top activity that we saw most of our customers uh, responded to which is very applicable in India is cooking right everyone today is become a master chef so what we quickly did is we used our online channels to re-engage with our customers we started engaging with celebrity chefs doing cooking shows at the same time you know projecting through those videos here are some great cookware items that you can buy from us at you know whatever rate uh, we started you know uh, you know projecting our active wear through live exercise classes you know that we started doing with some of the top athletes in the world uh, so those are some of the re-engagement exercises very carefully curated so we can continue to be engaged with the customers without coming across as being insensitive yeah okay virendra your thoughts please three three top challenges that you faced during the first 30 days of the lockdown yeah, first, as I said, right, first and most immediate challenge was to figure out what is our current situation vis-a-vis -vis basically this business challenge, right? So obviously, uh, we had to look at our inventory, but also inventory in response to our demand, right? Because we planned for, this was our year end, we planned our year in inventory based on a certain basically operating front for plan for the next year. Now, post-corona, that plan uh, would drastically change, right? And not a basically some minimal change, it's a drastically change. So we had to reassess basically entire situation. And that what will be, as I said, what will be the realistic demand? And as I said, that has gone through multiple iteration. And once we agreed on a certain number, then we had to immediately figure out that what is the excess which is getting created in the supply chain? Because as mm -hmm. we all know, one of the biggest challenges in this time is to manage the cash flow. So spending even a one dollar or something which is not needed is a big crime in, in the current scenario. So we figured out what raw material supplies and what the finished good, some of the finished good also which we buy from the outsource vendor, which are mm -hmm. the ones which are agential, uh, which are the things which can be cancelled, right? Some of those things has been just released, which, which the supplier has not acted on. So that is an easy to cancel. Mm -hmm. And that is actually a win-win proposition for both. For us, it saves our money, it saves our supplier money. So uh, that analysis was done and basically we took immediate action. Uh, a bigger challenge was basically supplier has invested in certain raw material or finished good. So because as I said, right, this is the time to basically collaborate. I means everybody is actually facing the uh, this one cash crunch. So we cannot, I means we are a very ethical organization. We didn't want to basically punish our suppliers or customer in any way, right? So we work with our suppliers in those cases where they have gone ahead with some of the earlier commitment. How can we actually defer it, right? What are the things which we need to actually take it? Which are the things which can be deferred on? Some and then basically, most important is basically we need to figure out that how can which are the areas where we can cut cost right uh, we need to actually right. stop any any hirings any other basically capital expenditures our it projects so we basically categorize right. all our activities in basically agential uh, nice to have and basically uh, something which we can actually just uh, we can just park for future right and so we basically uh, we we created a roadmap that what are the things which are big agencies uh, which will be focusing on uh, from now onwards uh, once we actually uh, that, then we also basically created basically that what sort of actually what will be the future 
how can we actually leverage this situation and convert into the opportunities for example we realized means we have to do some basically alignment in our portfolio for example uh, mm -hmm. socks is one of socks was one of our bigger portfolio mm -hmm. since the people are not going out socks may not be selling that high right so rather than socks how can we actually put our focus on some outerwear because a lot of people are actually uh, working from home so they would be the they would be likely to buy more of the relaxed wears right athleisure type of category so how can we actually uh, rationalize our portfolio which will actually drive for the growth so we figured out those opportunities also uh, in uh, apparel industry uh, there is a tremendous actually opportunity for some new segments like pps right so we mm -hmm. realized that how can we convert this adversity into opportunity so we are actually trying to explore those avenues which can actually give us some new source of revenue by getting into all to a new category that's why i said basically Aye. this corona is not only disruptor this is also a creator which, where it can actually creator. create some opportunity for companies to get into the new sector to try out new models and basically try to minimize the damage and survive i'm sure now we we next move on to kartikeyan to understand his three three biggest problems in the first 30 days of the lockdown kartikeyan yeah the first and foremost uh, challenge that we had was i had my support team from malaysia who was here helping us supporting set the uh, stores so the challenge for us was to make sure that they head back to malaysia before all the airports are locked down so we did face a lot of challenge in terms of getting the right kind of uh, you know logistics uh, to you know where they can reach back to malaysia that was one the second thing was in terms of uh, the fit outs where our existing fit outs were so so rasul uh, yes right now we have stores in mumbai but we are coming up with stores in pune so uh, almost 90% of our work in uh, one of the malls in pune store was done and we were just about to set this store uh, so the challenge for us was okay whether we can go ahead uh, with setting off the store or not that was the challenge the third uh, challenge in the last and the first 30 days post uh, this once this news broke out was mm -hmm. how do we conserve cash and for that uh, the majority of expense when you are running a retail uh, is goes towards the rentals so it was all about going to the malls collaborating um, making a request uh, giving them a proper understanding of what the scenario is you know, just an introductor into the country and you know just uh, uh, having our first store on 1st of december and within uh, 150 days this news breaks out to us so how do we manage uh, and look at the long term uh, and at the same time giving them the confidence that yes we have just started but going to be here for the long term so uh, how is it that we can collaborate give some support uh, a in terms of waiver or in terms of some deferment any kind of a support that can come in because most important for us and uh, right now uh, is to conserve cash uh, we being a value retailer uh, in the entire value chain yes uh, we have value infused so be it uh, our supply chain be it the recruitment the mode of operations uh, yes it's uh, very much we conserve value so that didn't come in as a surprise neither that's in our brand dna however to go back to the uh, mall retailers the mall developers was something that was challenging for us so they have been supportive i would like to agree upon that get a, get a good view uh, anil thoughts from you three three problems well uh, apart from actually i think what's been already covered around the inventory yes. and the cash flow situation i think one of the first and foremost things that we did was actually around um, you know ensuring the safety of our employees I mean, that's the first thing that we do. I mean, immediately sanitize us, send across to all the you know stores and offices and all of that. I remember, you know, because uh, the the entire delivery you know things came to you know my team, and then they were really scrambling actually because it's also a, a flammable way. Good, you can't just you know put it in a truck and send it across to the stores and so on. So our employee safety was probably the first thing that came to mind, and then kind of you know we took enormous steps to actually ensure. that everyone was safe even when you know stores were uh, barely operating and then when uh, offices were operating and when we were preparing for a, a what was a, a probably a, a shutdown which is you know just way uh, so we did that probably the employee safety was the first thing that we took care uh, which we thought very very important and secondly also continue to ensure that the employee engagement is also on because retail workforce is so volatile and then the attrition levels are so high you can't afford to lose your best team members so 
so therefore we ended up you know uh, having a continuous line of communication and encouraging them to kind of you know increase their you know scales or you know get their get out of the boredom and then you know get them to play some uh, you know even interactive games and so on we tried to actually make sure things actually happened and we also mm-hmm. made sure that the line managers were continuously in touch with all their team members so that the employee morale was always you know highly high and as and when we actually kind of start opening so which is currently happening as we speak we can actually start getting all the best people back into the business and they you know back at what they best do in you know day to day life apart from that perhaps actually i think it was also covered uh, in terms of our partners we wanted to treat the partners all equally which is already covered so we followed a similar yeah. kind of uh, footstep the last piece is actually i guess around the consumer we kept engaged uh, engaging with the consumer saying that you know because of safety reasons you know we are uh, you know you know we had to take these measures and so on but however you know here are some of the trends you know look at these you know uh, as soon as we open you know we can start uh, you know helping you with all these things and so on and we also started actually doing some space what would you buy you know so what are what are your uh, first things that you would like to buy you know obviously uh, we will be addressing some of those uh, you know issues in a later questions and so, and so on but then we exactly uh, were trying to understand what is in the mind of consumer you know what would she want to buy as soon as the lockdowns are lifted so that kind of engagement is what we kept uh, bala three three problems from you again yeah so the first one i would highlight is uh, the amount of surprise we had of, of course we were one of the few retailers which were open so uh, uh, although we have been a traditional home improvement retailer some of the products which we were selling surprised us and and the prime example i can state is water right water is not something a home improvement retailer sells in large quantity but uh, given we were some of the very few retailers which are open the amount of water we were selling and all the supply challenges we had i mean the amount of time we had to spend convincing our suppliers that water is something which you need to kind of source to us right uh, that, that that is one prime example of supply challenges we had right and of course uh, uh, the toilet paper challenges in us currently is almost legendary now at least in the retail uh, world right and one of the interesting things which we saw sales significantly shooting out as uh, toilet bidets right we almost f- now feel that given this crisis the entire nation's uh, washroom habits almost are changing right uh, and uh, i'm not I'm not not saying that in a joking way but something very thoughtful to be uh, reflected upon right uh, the second challenge obviously is associates and associate related training especially in the supply chain world right we do uh, operate some very sophisticated equipments to kind of manage our goods given Uh, a lot of our inventory is bulky items it could be patios it could be refrigerators and some of these things need specialized operators right and given the fact that uh, schools are shut down uh, uh, associates are forced to stay indoors to take care of uh, the kids uh, staffing was a big challenge and uh, therefore the amount of time we had to spend in training because it's also a safety issue given the kind of equipments and the products which we operate so that's that was the second thing and the third thing which we again continue to deal with is uh, the amount of scrutiny we have from state officials right uh, we have safety squads visiting us in 2000 of our stores and again local regulations keep changing in fact we have scenarios where state governors have come in and visited whether we are following regulations to kind of ensure that every thousands of our associates are meticulous in following some of these rules and regulations so kind of continuously maintaining that communication and kind of i um, mean we literally started creating positions which we call as social distancing ambassadors to kind of maintain all of this right so uh, these are two or three things which kind of comes talk to my mind that answers a lot uh now this is strange it was until yesterday customers were demanding rich shopping experiences that were personalized hyper connected and engaging the forces that were revolutionizing the landscape were sort of the explosion of data and, and connected devices uh probably software defined infrastructures uh cloud enabled as a service experience 
and and, and even outcome driven digital platforms that that made it imperative for retailers to showcase agility in tech adoption and business process optimization these were the priorities and so delivering exceptional experiences were were, were amongst the primary objectives in a dramatic turnaround of events out of nowhere a pandemic hits planet earth and and revolution is redefined everybody starts to talk about entirely new concepts of operations experiences and what not should i say a reset button appears in the discussion and while we navigate through lockdown 3.0 madhu i want to start by asking you how is the primary objectives of retail supply chain leaders taken shape between preparing to enter into a new decade as as we entered a new decade and and now with four months into 2020 Yeah I think I think Anil mentioned this earlier we have to listen to your consumers very carefully in terms of how they are perceiving the situation and I'm a data guy you know and this is where I think we've done a ton of surveys so for example what we are also noticing is our consumers in the North American segment that's earning over 100000 you know dollars are very are still very optimistic and when i say optimistic that they think the economy and retail sector will bounce back in the next you know 2 to 3 months uh the next segment to look at is age classification our gen z and millennials are very optimistic you know almost 50% of the survey, survey respondents have said that they believe the economy will bounce back in about you know 3 to 4 months right it's the gen x and the boomers that are still very pessimistic about it so again with with that you have to do very targeted shopping uh, targeted marketing you know to attract those consumers in a post covid or current covid scenario i think contactless shopping you know is going to be a key avenue where a ton of innovations are going to happen you know a lot of north american retailers have started doing um, you know virtual shopping experiences so you could book in appointments and uh, you know for example with us our consumers could shop with us continue to shop in our stores through zoom calls uh, and we started seeing you know significant engagements uh, you know through that uh, silent fashion you know as a concept has got coined uh, you know during covid this is where i believe temporarily bling will go out in high end fashion uh, and craftsmanship quality uh, etc will be a primer a primary uh, you know buying decision driver and bling is going to be paused for a while uh, i think these are some of the immediate uh, you know things that we're going to see i think someone also asked that um, you know how is um, you know what is what is going to con- you know sustain and continue and i believe uh, i think an avenue that is going to significantly grow in the north american sector is buy online you know pick up in store or curbside pick up you know consumers would want to go lesser and lesser into the stores but as, as a retailer you have to quickly innovate to see how can i remove the friction uh, out by providing these online fulfillment options and leave it up to the consumer to decide how you want to interact with the br- with the brand so those are some of the emerging trends that i see uh, it's already taken place and i think some of this is going to boom up uh, you know post covid as well and uh, how, how, what do you think how should companies redesign their supply chains to operate effectively uh, b- both at a mid term and an, a, as a long term perspective Yeah so long term here is what we're doing i'm very proud that our company is driving this it's a concept called buy now where now as you know in united states um, you know um, you know inventory gets set one season ahead so starting you know march and april you start actually seeing fall inventory come in now as you know your current assets um, you know get locked in with a ton of this inventory which you can cash out only 6 months down uh, we are driving this campaign call how can we bring in seasonal products in the season or maybe just a month before the season uh, but it's a lot easier said than done you have to collaborate with the uh, with our vendors manufacturers supply chain as well uh, because today um, you know it's going to be a shift our factories are manufacturing you're in your in uh, you know spring season but your factories are actually manufacturing fall and maybe they would have already completed their fall manufacturing now that's going to really you know shift your you know supply chain timelines ahead and it involves a ton of collaboration from sourcing from vendor communities uh, your supply chain is going to differ because your fall merchandise is typically going to be heavier than the spring uh, and you have to take all these accounts into practice so i'm happy you know sax is driving this and you need a big retailer like this to drive this momentum and hopefully that's going to become a norm in future us is also guilty of con- uh, of producing more um, and uh, you know incurring wastage across all fields and fashion is no exception you know even in the fashion field uh, a typical you know full price sell throughs happen only for a month 
two months would be a surprise. You start getting into markdown starting fifth, sixth week, right? And if you bring in more fashion relevant goods, you know, as an opportunity for a retailer, you get to sell full price for a much longer period. You produce just mm -hmm. what is needed and you reduce wastage. Yeah. Anil, uh, what are your thoughts? I, I'd want to restructure the question a bit uh, uh, as I've received from uh, one of our audience. Uh, how should companies redesign their supply chains to operate effectively? And the add-on is in a highly volatile world where consumers are intolerant of tardy responses. Well, uh, there are two parts to it, I guess. You know, I would like to you know, dissect it into two parts and kind of answer that. The first one is, I think that consumers, um, you know, exuberance or consumers intolerance actually for time or lack of time. You know, mm -hmm. it's definitely been uh, now what I mean, you know, we were actually in a situation where it was a next day delivery, same day delivery, eight hour delivery, four delivery, two hour delivery. I mean, mm -hmm. the next was actually there was a call ad, I think, you know, all of us that say on Indian television, you think of a furniture, mm -hmm. the guys next to you assembling your house. So, you know, it, it was actually getting into that kind of a situation where there was almost like impatience, intolerance, actually, from the consumer side of it. All of that is now watered down. I mean, people have now gone, you know, as you rightly said in the beginning, uh, they've actually hit the pause button. They've kind of said, actually, okay, if I don't wear this dust, actually, and then, you know, immediately post my, actually, you know, probably the, um, my poses actually on my Instagram or one of my social media, whatever. I mean, there isn't going to be a great deal of, uh, you know, difference because I can't wear this and go out right now or this week or this month. So what is best for you is actually the best ever lounge where you can think of, right? So from the expectation perspective, you know, perspective, I guess uh, consumers have actually understood now that the pause button has said, okay, let's kind of, you know, get back to the drawing board and then start seeing what do I need for the next two to three months? I mean, what do we probably, you know, require probably during festive? Maybe I'll look at it later. So that discretionary spend is definitely on hold right now. What they will be spending mm -hmm. is only on the necessities, on the essentials and so on. That is on the expected side of things. Now, coming to the redesigning the supply chain, I guess I mm -hmm. think uh, Madhu addressed, you know, quite a bit of that. JT is what comes to my mind. Just in time is probably the philosophy that we will all have to adopt in the entire value chain, right from probably the sourcing fabrics, factories, and then kind of, you know, uh, getting into the, uh, the retail shops and even, you know, Educating a customer, educating a customer actually like what Madhu was saying, okay, what do you need for the next month or two? Okay, how can, how can we view that actually maybe with a month later, next month later? So that is definitely going to become the life for all of us. So just in time, philosophy will definitely start driving the value chain, which is probably very good because as Madhu rightly and, said, and, and, it will, and Anil, I'm, I'm so sorry to disturb your chain of thoughts, but when you, when you talk about JIT, when you talk about just in time, uh, are you are you looking at the midterm perspective, or or do you think the JIT concept is still of value uh, if you look at the longer longer term perspective? Because because the next I was going to come, next yeah. pandemic will will be no less uh, a surprise. So I was going to come to that actually. So JIT is actually I mean look at automotive right now. I mean whether there's a pandemic or not. If the plant shut down, it shut down. And then when the plant starts, it's back into eight hours or two hours synchronous actually manufacturing. So which means, you know, you will not be, you know, you don't have to order white cars on a Monday, black cars on a Tuesday and things like that, right? So once it is set into your DNA of your lifestyle, GI will become part of your life. Here and now for the next two quarters, quarter one and quarter two, and even probably to the good part of festive, we only produce what is definitely required to the customer. So what I was going to suggest, I was say earlier was, like Madhu mentioned, we end up actually producing lot of wastage. I mean, I was actually previewed to lot of US markets in the month of December, January. There were truck loads, container loads of actually merchandise, which was, you know, being sold, at, you know, the discount outlets and even the cost coast of the world actually. I mean, denim is like almost like a warehouse full of, right? So that kind of a madness will probably get reset right now. And once into the JIT mode for the next probably two to three quarters, it will probably become a part of your life. Even the fashion, we have started seeing the fashion. We already have the fast fashion being produced within 21 days, 30 days from the likes of Zara world, right? So all of us have actually adopted to some part of that. But that was only a fashion element. 
these days i guess because of the covid or any pandemic like this covid we will definitely get into how can we reduce this entire you know cycle how can we actually value shift the entire you know the the value chain how can we probably reduce the whole thing so that we will start making only what is required by the customer and reduce the waste which is a main thing like that so that that's exactly what we will also be thinking actually and we'll be getting on to do it bala bala your thoughts please yeah uh, just uh, to add on to what uh, anil and madhu has said of course uh, one trend which is obvious is how online and digital is going to be uh, so much more critical and important right and just touching upon what is strategic and what we have been planning for uh, the next decade and things like that uh, at least at lows the way we look at it is by definition if something is strategic it it almost means that it has got a great return value or it is almost an existential question for the business right if there are initiatives which are of that nature you essentially can't decide that because there is a six months or a one year or a two years worth of disruption uh, should we slow it down right that's the question we have been asking and uh, the firm answer is we uh, as much as there are distractions in the immediate terms uh, our best effort and focus is on kind of sustaining those long term uh, needs right and specifically what that means from a supply chain perspective was how do we expand our last mile delivery how do we kind of uh, ensure that our distribution and warehousing network kind of sustains the online demands right how do we onboard vendors much more quickly because that's a dynamic situation now so uh, those are some of the things which we are grappling with and although we are expected to take some short term actions but the question which we are asking us is, is it in the same direction as what we want to do strategically long term right so those are the two questions we keep asking ourselves every time we make a decision right and i think Perfect. adding to bala i think uh, this is also going to present a lot of scope for both vertical integration as well as downward integration from a supply chain standpoint you know a ton of your brands are filing bankruptcy they might not be relevant they might not continue to exist in the new normal and that's an opportunity for a for a big brand retailer you know to expand their private uh, private brand similarly brands can you know expand on vertical integration you know they might not depend on you know large retailers like a landmark or even us you know back in north america and they could you know in turn you know vertically integrate and create their own supply chain and distribution networks i think those are some of also some trends that could emerge sounds good virendra and kartik and my question uh, i'll want to shift the question to you and uh, I'll, i'll want to pick one question again from uh, one of our audience uh, harsha anand kumar uh, he is asking how will you maintain trust in your brand and your products and services how will you reset expectations for today uh, and and how will you recover the customer experience in the future uh, virendra uh, your thoughts please yeah so so rusu my i think it's very important uh, means i think i come from jockey which is one of the adopted brand and basically one of the thing we had done in the past right uh, i think the companies who have been actually very brand conscious and very ethical uh, will actually will face less trouble in these times because for example if you see uh as a brand we have been very consistent in terms of our quality in terms of basically our uh, our return policies and also in terms of discount right means we are in india since all last almost 20 25 years we have never offered a discount and basically our customer basically returns are also actually very less and whenever actually it is there we actually we have been actually exceeded customer expectation by actually promptly answering that so i think in this scenarios uh, we have been conscious that basically it's very important to retain the customer so we are putting extra focus on our customer support team so that whatever actually if there is any uh, voice of the customer uh, if we can actually capture that how quickly and promptly we are actually able to uh, respond that and just because basically this uh, this is a pandemic situation we don't want to be in the situation that we suddenly start offering discount or basically suddenly compromise on our quality so basically the uh, we are not compromising on our basic ethos right so as a brand we have been consistent we are going to be consistent so that the customer gets the message that yeah we are in the business we are going to be the, the business and we will respect basically our basic uh, values principles in our customer orientation 
come what may so these are the thing which has been non negotiable uh, and we are actually continuing to put the focus that even despite of this challenging times we are not compromising on our quality I mean, suddenly we are not going to the cheap sources or basically uh, trying to cut down costs. We are actually buying cheap fabrics, so we are not doing any of these things. Rather than we are also putting extra focus on our customer focus, uh, our customer uh, call centers, etc., so that how promptly actually we can actually uh, respond to actually the customer. Uh, we are also trying to basically, uh, basically, we all know that right. The rules of the games have changed, right? So this is a time to be basically. is innovative as possible for basically reaching the customer so we are actually trying to come up with a newer way to basically reach the customer because retail is source for close now they are opening up but we actually tried basically certain new models that there are so many departmental stores which were earlier not actually keeping our products right so we started actually leveraging some of that those channels and basically trying to uh, reach the customer because though we are uh, in retail we, are, we come under non essentials but we may be categorized as essentials among the non essentials right rabins if you come consider the entire apparel yeah. market actually by this cleaner yeah. garment if they need right actually postpone the other purchases so we are trying to basically being as innovative and trying to see that our customer doesn't miss us right even despite of this challenging time and we are actually trying to retain our basic uh, ethos so that we give a very consistent message so uh, the hit is uh, so huge i'm not sure if i should still be saying the the rules of the game is changed or the game is changed uh kartik and your thoughts please uh well for us to establish the trust in the brand among our consumers what we are looking at shifting the fear and panic to faith and praise uh that is one thing so hygiene uh, the ease of shopping at the same time you know like the consumer who walks into our store feels comfortable uh, we are looking at how do we manage the expectations the post covid when we open because a lot of people are looking so we 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 have uh, the right from a cleaning equipment to stationery to car accessories to uh, hardware tools uh, in our to toys in our store and we know we did a survey and we uh, have come up with the results that you know a lot of people are looking for the cleaning equipment so typically we are looking at shifting or realigning our planogram such that when a consumer walks in uh, they get exactly what they are looking for have a ease of uh, you know at a checkout at the counter in terms of uh, contactless shopping experience and they can move out so uh, earlier where we were wanting the consumer to spend more time in the store uh, it is gradually shifting uh, wherein the consumer also wants to have a quicker checkout so i would say resume like the gradual shift that were happening over time will now accelerate and become more immediate behavioral change for the consumer and yes we will start seeing that post covid scenario perfect uh moving on to our next question uh, i'd want to set the context saying the the digitization wave and the increasing degree of uh, interconnectedness has has transformed the global economy into a single unified marketplace this is exactly what happened before covid-19 the retail industry was by far positioned the most favorably within this new paradigm the borderless economy of the future was promising a larger global footprint and a progressively expanding consumer base to the operators who were able to edge out the competition and adopt and align emerging technologies to create an infrastructure conducive to uh, offering customer centric business uh, solutions and it was a customer centric business model now a lot of retail companies have been overhauling legacy infrastructure models and supporting technologies with the goal of rewiring the enterprise for purposes of increased agility and lean operation has this helped uh, anil my question to you is what do you feel has been the role of technology in these trying times and how having the right and capable technology partner will be crucial and helpful to successful navigation in this pandemic see i guess uh, you know it's it's a very very pertinent and then very you know important uh, you know question or area of focus for uh, you know us retailers in fact obviously you know a lot of us have uh, inherited the legacy systems and so on and it is not actually the what the solutions because you know uh, having consulted with uh, you know not only the north american market and also the pacific market for a long time i know that lot of actually traditional retailers actually have legacy system which are completely which are which are struggling to be compatible with some of the best in class or the best solutions in fact 
so it is not actually what solutions you are going to have or what kind of like system you know plug and play you are going to have the key is a partnership what you mentioned i mean you need to have the right partner who will make it who will make the technology available not in months and years but in a matter of days and weeks because right now when we are talking about it for the entire value chain has to be enabled very clearly through the technology so very clearly whether it is a design table or it's actually on the purchasing and then kind of a buying cycle or it's in the supply chain cycle or the distribution you know itself or within the stores itself for example like uh, one of our co-panelists mentioned about contactless shopping that's going to become the norm in fact that's going to become the new norm so how can i mean and also right now customers are scared of trials they do not want to trial any gum so they do not know so that's why they are actually okay has it been trial so then they want to kind of perhaps touch it out yeah. so so you know where uh, uh, try before you buy and all those things you know those uh, phrases are gone right now so this contact like shopping may how can you give a closest look whether it's a magic mirror or virtual actually dressing up or whatever so those mm-hmm. those some other things actually might become important actually for consumers to kind of you know get an idea before you buy and then uh, also uh, right now the technology pieces which will probably connect the and time to when irrespective of what legacy systems you have who are the partners and what partners actually systems have they got and so on so the seamless integration will continue be continue to become the the key kind of a or uh, or i key key piece in fact in the entire jigsaw puzzle so that you are able to get that information in real time and able to share it with everyone in the valley chain bala your thoughts please Bala, are you with us? Yeah, I'm there. Am I audible? Yes. Yep. All right. Um, so, sharing my perspective, in fact, uh, Lowe's and technology, we considered it so critical that 80% of all the technology activities which we do are insourced, right? Um, of course, as a technologist myself, I am a little biased. uh the way i would almost look at it uh, and say that uh, every business is a software business and we are working in different domains but maybe i am a little biased uh but uh, certainly from a lowes perspective we do consider technology as a core of what we are doing and therefore we have uh, in source 80 95% of our uh, operations uh, based on which domain and which area we are talking about uh some of the key things which has helped us uh to kind of address this crisis is uh, about a year and a half back we kind of started revamping our online uh, assets right uh, we were operating with a 10 year old legacy online system 10 year is too long for an online uh, platform and we have moved two thirds of our online business into google cloud right and that was one of the biggest enablers for us to kind of sustain peak volumes in the current scenario just to give a context uh, the amount of uh, sales which is happening currently online exceeds even our holiday peak season sales in some of the days right so uh, 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 we, just by those kind of investments we are just able to sustain many of the things in the current situation right so uh, um and, uh, and and i'll give you some of the simple examples right while uh, these are long term strategic things one of the first things which we did when we kind of started addressing this crisis is build a social distancing app uh, right because every state had its own regulations in terms of the number of people who who can be allowed into a store uh, right so literally within th- 24 hours we built a social distancing app which is kind of deployed in uh, all the 2000 uh, stores across us and canada right so those are the kind of impact technology can make right and and i, I can go on uh, technology is something which i am pretty close to but uh, just to Madhu, share some thought. of the Madhu, I think it's going to. I think we are in the I middle of digital transformation. I think uh, 
you know, COVID and mm-hmm. post COVID, I think that transformation is going to accelerate, right? There's going to be mm-hmm. a significant, mm-hmm. um, you know, innovation, technology enhancement, just from our standpoint, uh, as mm-hmm. we speak, we are in the middle of changing our platform to a most robust platform that can, uh, you know, inject a lot of pers- personalization to our consumers. And at the same time, from a fulfillment standpoint, you allow the consumers to decide how they want to interact with the banner right or the or the brand you know if the consumer decides yes i want to walk into a store and shop you have to enable that and you have to provide safety contactless shopping you know what does trial room of the future look like uh, right i think anil mentioned magic mirrors you know that could be a huge investment you know just stand in front of the mirror with a cloth and it will show how you look in that apparel uh, from our standpoint we are redefining with our vendors what the samplers look like because we don't want to keep a big bottle of a perfume or a makeup kit which multiple people are going to use you know reduce the sample Sampler size and, and give it away. Um, so yeah, technology is going to be huge. Um, I think you know I was just reading some of the questions as well, and I think Krishna was asking, will it not increase dependencies on suppliers, etc.? Absolutely, right. And that's where I think big brand departmental stores might look at more downward integration, where they can control manufacturing and supply chain. Uh, brands that want to directly reach out to consumers, they might look at more vertical integration. And this all involves a ton of analytics, um, um, you know as well as technology investments. I also see consolidation happening, right? That was also one of the questions. Absolutely, you know, we're going to see, um, you know, a lot of brands or departmental stores might not exist in future. In US alone, last week, uh, J. Crew filed bankruptcy. There are talks Neiman Marcus will file it this week or next week. Uh, J.C. Penney, Macy's are struggling. So this may involve some, you know, cleanup consolidation in the market. At the same time, mergers and acquisitions could be uh, also the new norm immediately after COVID. That sounds good. Karthik, and uh, your views? So for us, uh, in terms of technology, the uh, the biggest support from technology has come in is in terms of having the, establishing the connectivity uh, and uh, mm-hmm. having the communication. Uh, we look at technology as a non-disruptive creator. Uh, that's what we say, because uh, we design technology and uh, the kind of ERP systems that we have, we, we make sure that those are very simple easy to use uh, kind of a technology. So uh, coming to the shopping behavior, uh, yes, I uh, we've been listening this multiple times uh, on this uh, streaming and that's gonna be the contestless uh, shopping experience that we give. Uh, however, at the supply chain part also, we are uh, you know realigning a lot of our systems in terms of uh, doing the proper planning because uh, the demand forecasting and material planning is something which is very important. Uh, using tools, the right kind of tools to derive that is what we are looking at. Virendra, how do you look at this? Yeah, Rajiv, so means like Bala, I also come from technology background, so I'm a little biased towards, I'm a little biased towards that. Uh, but uh, just before COVID also, right? I, it great basically before COVID also, I think most of the companies, right, they realize basically that digital transformation of supply chain is absolutely essential. And many of them were already on the path of digital transformation. But even those other, and, and many of the others, they have either just started or at least they were thinking about it. I mean, so it was never a case that people did not realize the importance of this. So at least right, some companies started and some companies were about to start, right? And, the fundamental shift which was happening as part of digital transformation was if you if you if you take a step back if, if you remember that in the late 90s or early uh, uh, means or 10 years back when the most of the companies when they started actually focusing on the ERPs and the ERPs was doing basically not only the transactional uh, tra- means transactions also it was doing a lot of planning related things also right but what ha- what is changing as part of digital transformation is the digital core is shrinking. Now the ERP is actually more and more focused towards the transactions, right? Transactions data, right? Like accounting, purchasing, uh, procurement, uh, sort of basically manufacturing orders. But there are a lot of peripheral applications which are actually uh, coming close to basically that. For example, there are very advanced planning solutions. There are advanced demand planning. Basically, there are a lot of cloud-based solutions which are coming up, right? Which can actually uh, help you track the demand at the store level at a much, much faster level. There are applications uh, which 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 will help you to do actually plan at the more or more granular level, right? More, and even your planning frequency can be actually as detailed as possible. As I said in my 
uh, uh, earlier uh, conversation that it is not only about planning it is about the speed of replanning right because situation is so dynamic the demands are changing basically almost every day and every week right so can how granular planning we can do and how can we actually uh, capture the voice of the customer that can only happen if you have every accurate point of sale data right so there are basically these are a uh, lot of actually peripheral applications which are available which can talk to this uh, core erp application right so that the planning and execution uh, becomes seamless having said that what i have seen in the retail industry still actually the technology adoption has been low as anil was also saying there are a lot of legacy application so this is a time for basically all of us to actually get into basically uh uh at least move on that path create a digital road map for themselves and basically figure out um, and and this digital transformation should not be only looked only for the basically from the point of view of corona corona is making it more and more important and this is actually help us create actually a road map create opportunity which will help us which will help take our supply chain for the next 5 years and 10 years and god forbid if there is another corona or any other disruption happens that time businesses will be better prepared and they will respond much faster and in a much agile way i'll, I'll move on to uh, consumers uh, a lot uh, we've been discussing a lot of uh, uh, things around uh, uh, consumers now with no past reference available to judge how consumer behavior will shape up uh, after uh, a pandemic induced lockdown uh, marketers and analysts expect to see a cautious customer who wants to stock up to be able to work from home but also conserve cash now what do you think what has been the role of consumer behavior in shaping up retail supply chain responses your responses to covid-19 and and with lockdown 3.0 and beyond what sources are you looking to 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 predict consumer behaviors uh, anil well uh, i think i i just partly alluded uh, earlier itself uh, uh, rajum actually about this uh, uh, this aspect we have mm-hmm. uh, kept our com- you know consumers actually in a constant engagement a continuous engagement we have also been mm-hmm. doing internal service and so on uh, be it your uh, social network group or actually the bloggers or uh, you know on our websites and so on so we've been doing actually you know series of activities where trying to understand the consumer mindset even even you know uh, uh, even if you look at uh, the wider retail consumer right now at the country level as i said earlier the discretionary spend will be put on hold i mean that is for sure so there will be definitely money kept aside for buying all the essentials i mean what are all the essentials that we are looking at i mean people are now talking about uh, buying a you know a dishwasher because you know the maids are actually on leave and then they are really struggling about you know kids uh, help and things like that and then how long husband will end up cleaning actually the dishes right so he would rather get you money to buy a nice dishwasher and then put it in a kitchen right and that kind of a thing plus talking about groceries and then you know beverages and then kitchen equipment and so on and there are a lot of actually wear at home wear at home actually the casuals are the you know basic necessities are definitely going to be the first line of purchases as soon as the lockdown is lifted which we have already been seeing some uh, you know some uh, you know indications around that and the most important part of actually the retail or apparel retail is that kids wear right kids grow out of their you know clothes very soon i mean every couple of months they need uh, you know new clothes so that is becoming actually a prime area of focus for immediately after the lockdown is lifted actually similarly home entertainment is now becoming more and more because you can't travel there are no travels actually at least for the remaining part of the year i guess right so and then also there are no holidays outside and so on so they are trying to look at how can we entertain ourselves actually you know within the house itself so the home entertainment is becoming actually more so these are all some of the indicators which is coming to various customer engagements or various actually the you know interactions that you know we been uh, not only in our landmark group but also at a general retail uh, versus customer or consumer behavior where uh, we are trying to pick up some indicators so that's what is very clearly happening and what is definitely not happening as i said you know the big spends are now not there actually at all fashion and trendy clothing and so on probably it'll have to wait until after at least the festive season because you know again no one knows you know when the lockdown is going to be lifted completely when will you be able to conduct your business as before it is probably another as it rightly you know indicate 6 to 12 months in fact earlier part of the conversation so therefore the fashion and trendy element of those things you know can wait there will be probably some part of you know fashion element will come probably into the festive season because you know india want to you know wear some nice you know festive looking clothing and all that during there and you know diwali and so on but then even there 
the ultra fashion or the fast fashion and all we probably have to wait similarly like what we talked about the travel and then you know holiday and the white goods large white goods all of that we'll have to wait but there will be the discretion is pending on the home essential and then you know uh, the homeware all those areas you know you will you will definitely see a, a remarkable you know jump in the expenditure expenditure actually from the consumer that's that's what is our take actually oh, a lot of your uh, talk is also about hinting to retail companies that has been say that the dishwashers are going to be into the demand now uh, madhu your thoughts and what sources are you looking at uh, consumers uh, apart from uh, keeping them engaged uh, during uh, the the entire period of lockdown uh, what sources are you referring to so we start a, a ton of streaming services right because we believe that work from home is going to be extended beyond and i think that is the segment that we want to really capture right uh, we are turning, doing a ton of streaming videos with our designer partnership to say how do you dress up for work because a lot of our work from home calls are video like this one right uh, and we are educating our customers and you know telling them this is a trendy way to look up for work so we are seeing uh, some of our casual wear athleisure uh, you know are all comping are doing much better than you know pre covid uh, accessories you know i think someone mentioned some statistics that overall accessories fashion design etc has declined but we are seeing an uptick of all of that you know primarily to do with fine and fashion jewelry that's on an uptick clean beauty and clean cosmetics is on a rise you know because people are focusing more on skin care products um, that we are seeing with our consumers again this is primarily to do with how do you how do you show up for work from home on, on a camera uh, at the same time today people are spending a lot of time in their house uh, home improvement has taken priority you know which has been neglected in the past so we are seeing home essentials home improvement products uh you know bed bathing everything on a on an increase now what's going to see a decline which i believe will continue to see a decline is ready to wear <laughs> designer uh because you're not going to go through a lot of parties uh you don't have a lot of weddings to attend uh so those are categories that you're going to see a decline and coming into fall and that's how we are planning exactly to try and down plan some of those categories and shift you know planning budgets into some of these categories that may make more sense to the consumers and again i think anil reiterated this multiple times constantly keep listening to your consumers then needs are very different and you need to kind of tune and produce assortment that matches that bala my question to you is <clears throat> uh, let's assume a, a situation wherein like anil in uh, madhu said that we have been tracking uh, and we have been engaging with our customers but there are quite possibilities that that uh, apart from consumer behaviors the target audience changes for a business like uh, virender was saying for for jockey there has been a lot of shift their predominant uh, core was, was was the socks but it, it, it changed to a different uh, category altogether uh, if something like that happens how how would you be prepared yeah yeah so uh, some of my interesting observations and some of the things which we have been doing uh, traditionally home improvement and diy is typically kind of targeted to adults right but uh, given the fact that uh, kids are all at home right one of the things which we have been kind of encouraging is what are the kind of diy projects that kids can get engaged right uh, some of the conversations which we are having is um, as much as we are having streaming and television and all of the stuff uh, personally if you ask me i would prefer uh, my kids to be spending time in lawn and gardening rather than spending 8 or 10 hours uh, in 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 the front of a video streaming exercise right some of those things are what we are kind of encouraging as as you said uh, lows being a home improvement retailer we cover everything from appliances to lawn and gardening and all of the stuff right nothing wrong about streaming but uh, we are also trying to look at can we go back to our basis kind of encourage simple projects paints is something which is uh we are we're selling in tons right and and we we were very surprised the amount of participation from the younger generation in painting the houses right those are some of the interesting trends we are observing a lot of i believe uh, but, but having said that uh, go ahead go ahead sorry. having said that i don't think husbands can't give any more excuses saying that i don't have time to fix the bathroom now So you have to go and fix it with the plumbing or electricity or a bathroom or that like what you were saying. You don't have any excuses. You have to fix up all those long overhead, small small things in the house. And all of us know how many are there actually. 
and uh, anil i will supply all the plumbing equipment from mr diy store <laughs> i'm sure i bet i bet that's a sales yeah, pitch there <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think a lot of consumer behavior will be also depending on how the companies, how how the comp- how the brands uh, put together in 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 forms of messages of what is good and what is bad, the do's and don'ts. So I think this is a key area that companies should focus on how they craft their messages for for consumers. Now, uh, m- moving on to uh, risks that are there right now. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is raising questions about uh, these risks in supply chain and how prepared were the stores. See, see, the economic fallout of this pandemic is already telling us that business, businesses weren't, weren't really prepared for, for such supply chain risks, on, and that too at this scale. And the logistics systems or distribution facilities or the supply networks, uh, most of these infrastructure was not ready to support the emergency caused by the Black Swan event, uh, COVID-19. So how do you think uh, will risk be perceived now uh, as we move ahead uh, um, uh, after lockdown? I think I can start Mother. off. I think I think the risk is, um, you know, significantly high because we're still operating in a lot of unknowns. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to occur. Stores have started reopening both here in India and United States, but we don't know if a second wave will arise, right? So there's a lot of unknowns and, um, you know, especially because retail, you know, our logistics are so dated with legacy system, we are not very nimble to react to that, right? So that's one big risk. The second big risk that I see is there's a significant shift to online shopping. And as you know, historically, a big risk in online is a whole reverse logistics. The margins are lower because you have to be highly promotional. You know, one in two products that a consumer buy returns it back, right? And mm-hmm. with that shift, your, your operating cost um, you know, will continue to be high and your margin deterioration will continue to exceed. So that's a significant risk. And that's where I think a lot of technology innovations have to happen. How can you give confidence to your consumers that this is the right size that I need to pick up that will exactly fit me rather than picking two adjacent sizes, trying it on at home and sending one back, right? Um, or else as a retailer, I think your margin erodation can be rapid with significant shift in digital. So that's the biggest risk that I see. Virendra, in your fact, thoughts on uh, this? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, Anil, you were saying something. Go ahead. Yeah, so I know I was just saying actually in the, particularly in the supply chain, I mean, one of the biggest uh, risks actually that we are seeing right now is the safety. For example, we've been told to keep standby teams, in fact, you know, around the warehousing and so on, because in case there is one positive actually recorded in that entire team, entire team has got to be at least, you know, stand stood. In fact, you know, you need to keep them aside and then have another team engaged into, into the activity, which is actually a huge, uh, you know, ask in terms of, uh, because thousands of, you know, people have already, the casuals, all the, you know, uh, the unskilled, you know, category have already gone back to the villages and so on. So there is going to be a lot of, you know, shortage at crunch actually of the manpower, which probably is going to be one of the biggest risks that, uh, you know, I see in terms of uh, people and then, you know, people engagement. But on the consumer side, I think, you know, uh, probably in, in, in my experience or in our experience, I think we want to do the right thing, but then also be careful because the currently the community is actually, you know, uh, abundant amount of actually information, GAN, you know, a lot of, you know, messages, you know, how to be safe. And people are, I think, you know, they are fed up right now to, you know, being told actually what to do, how to manage yourself in the COVID and all that. So I think sensitively, it gives them, try to give them least possible, but be very, very careful about the environment and then ensure that the appliances are there. For example, I think the RGS is going to become a mandatory thing actually for, you know, all the shoppers and so on, because it's become mandatory now for all the employees. Now that the government has mandated that every employee has to have RGS on their mobile phones and so on. So things like that, you need to be cautious about that. And also important part is you perhaps need to also know who has come and visited you, whether it's a warehouse or the store or any of your actually offices and so on. You need to keep a close record of all of that. Otherwise, if there is unfortunately, there is you know, if something happens, you need to trace it back to all of the, you know, all of those guys, right? So that also is becoming another risk, actually. So we need to manage all that, I guess. So, Virendra, I, I'll, I'll change this one to you. I'll reframe the question. And I'll talk from a leader perspective. So when most business leaders think about risks to their supply chain, they focus quite narrowly on risks to supply, uh, like raw goods or products. But, but with this time uh, being so uncertain, uh, businesses need to think much more broadly than 
than the narrow thinking and do you feel this is correct and what risks are usually ignored yeah so i think uh, this part was actually, i think uh, anil partly answered that right because one obviously one thing is to basically make sure that the operations are running so that in that mm-hmm. makes that requires basically raw material supplies and basically other supplies uh, so that basically vendors are supplying those things but more and more important how, how do you run the operation right now running the operation will require most important is cash flow right we obviously we already discussed but it's a very big problem i think this is the biggest actually which the supply chain is facing because your fixed cost is there right your salaries are there basically your overheads are there that are not going going to go away and if you see almost in the last two months there is no revenue and it is very unlikely that things are improving at least in the next couple of months when if the revenues will be there it will be significantly lower right so suddenly most of the companies will start actually facing this cash crunch and some of them they have to actually adopt for loan etc just to keeping just to keep the operations afloat right so that is one part of the problem second part of the problem is other than the supply thing is basically let's say when you start running the factories right or basically in, when you are asking your vendor operations uh, anil was also touching upon this how do you actually make sure that the safety is there right you cannot run basically with the 100% capacity because one case and you are gone right not only because of the government will enforce basically the lockdown on you but also it will affect the employee morale in a big way right so how you need to define your plant layout so you cannot have basically lines where the workers are actually standing close to each other you have to actually maintain social distancing on the within the plant also and, and which is not easy because there are some products it is easy there are so many so many other products which are which work on a single piece flow then how do you actually so you have to actually fundamentally change the way you work just to actually keep the uh, uh, things afloat right so this is, is that's what actually the entire supply chain is struggling this is an this uh, corona has created an unprecedented situation in the supply chain there are problems which we have never thought and now we have to actually respond in basically as innovative way as possible as creative way i am happy that i see actually not only in my organization in most of the organization actually they came out with a lot of actually uh, good ideas for example if i talk about basically uh, some of the ideas which i have seen on the in the factory uh, they created a zigzag flow because there is a let's say in those cases where the single piece has to uh, flow if you are actually moving product if you are creating a gap between the line product may not flow right but uh, and if you are keeping the operators close to each other there is a risk so then they came out with this zigzag flow so that they are not directly interfering with the other operator as well as at same time the line is flowing so as i said it's a there are a lot of challenges uh, the silver lining is uh, we see some solution though those are not perfect solution uh, which we all believe cannot be in this scenario but at least uh, i see basically a lot of actually positive solutions coming up you we all see the right the type of actually solution which you have innovation which you have seen for this uh, uh, the sanitizers right you can basically touch with your leg and it comes right so people are coming to be as innovative as possible and trying to respond to this risk and basically as i said right this is a time to stay afloat right if we survive today we can fight tomorrow and those companies who survive today i think for most of the companies it's important that survive this 3 months 6 month corona is not going to last right humanity is going to win uh, against corona it's only matter of time uh, it's time to be as creative as possible and pass on this 5 6 month and those companies who can actually survive in a good way uh, they will they will emerge out as a winner uh, post corona and and what about the demand risk so uh, if, if, how can we actually capture the demand uh, more accurately if, there, if, if there's a sudden surge again you, you, we are talking about having jit in place right now Uh, like right. Anish said, so, and what about uh, yeah. if for a particular category, there's a sudden surge in demand? See, uh, for demand, actually, I have a very different uh, take, right? I think I never believed that the basically, I think uh, most of the companies they have been very forecast driven, and still today, right? Uh, and forecasting, according to me, can be accurate to a certain extent, and beyond that, I think uh, you can actually improve very little, and it requires a tremendous amount of effort, even in the non-corona environment. Uh, companies. Uh, should i realize that they need to become more and more demand driven they need to become more and more and they should have done it before corona itself but now with corona this is more important that how can we basically uh, become more demand driven rather than forecast driven and let me explain you the difference between the forecast and demand when i'm talking about that right uh, if you see the currently the process is most of the snop process uh, this works on the statistical forecast or some collaboration uh, which is not a very uh, which is either at the warehouse level actually statistical data forecast data or basically maybe they are granular till the level of month 
or the good good companies who are little bit more advanced they go to the weekly level right uh, but it has now the demand has to be more granular and daily uh, because situation is changing on a day to day basis and in order to make the demand driven we have to actually utilize the technology like like demand driven mrp uh, we can actually adopt the concept of theory of constraint where we can create a buffer we you can create a buffer before bottleneck you can, you create that buffer based on some forecasting but when it comes to actually meeting the customer demand you respond to what and each day what is the demand changing is happening right you respond to that so your future, your once you create a buffer your next production and the next specific supply supply to the buffer should happen on what is actually getting replenished from the that store right you sense that demand from the point of sale perspective and then respond and and i think there will not be any better opportunity for companies to become more demand driven use the concept like demand driven mrp use the concept like theory of constraint create that buffer and basically meet the customer demand uh, because forecasting can only be accurate till a certain level means and though it was working in the past now obviously it is extremely challenging fatigue and your thoughts on this please uh so in terms of the risk that we were talking i would say that uh, we should also look at switch, switching from the defense to the offense so when we are talking of defense health safety pnl that's all ongoing and that's gonna be however we also need to look at what is and plan our next phase uh, be fast and decisive and be you know take action that's very important you know like yes when we are safeguarding we are being defensive we also need to look at the next steps in terms of how do we move in fact uh, razum i would like to share uh, two case studies uh, one is of sanofi which uh, you know invested in 2000 2003 in their uh, r&d and you know they really evolved uh, other brand is alibaba you know which really uh, you know took advantage of the sars uh, which came up and you know they have grown today so uh, yes when we are being defensive it's very important for us to switch from being defensive to offensive and uh, looking at the next phase of development uh, that is what so being take actions look at certain things what's working what's not working be mindful it's more of a participative management you know uh, how you are going to uh, take uh, use all the information that is available yes we've been there has been a lot of information which has been floating also so Uh, managing communication is a, another most important thing uh, that i feel uh, razum perfect sounds good bala your views please yeah uh, just kind of uh, building on to kartikeyan's point that's one of the things which i wanted to highlight while we talked a lot about technicals uh, i just want to highlight the element about human collaboration right and this is one of the key things which we are focused right and uh, one of the reasons we have been reasonably successful is because and just to give you a little bit of background and why lowes is an essential retailer right uh, the background to that is uh, it's not just about the products we sell but we are one of the uh, emergency responders right uh, as much as we were de- dealing with covid and things like that two other critical things which we are dealing with was there was a earthquake in april in utah right uh, entire southern states in us is going through significant tornadoes right and in fact since 2011 this has been uh, the severest of uh, tornadoes which we are dealing with right uh, uh, and what some of this has taught us is uh, not to look at so store supply chain merchandising as silos right how do we kind of bring all of this together right and we have a fantastic operating model of having command centers literally agile communications where uh, all the significant partners in this business kind of literally on daily basis sometimes hourly basis collaborate right and uh, as much as many other technological advances and things like that uh many of our successes are kind of uh, uh rooted and boiled down to simple human collaborations c- keeping the communication effective uh, uh everybody having the same vision and direction right uh, uh, some of those broader things uh plays equally an important role as much as many of the operational stuff which we we'll have to deal with sounds good madhu uh, i think uh, we'll move on to next question with your thoughts on this please uh, let, let's talk about something that has happened this monday from monday 
lockdown was relaxed in india as you all know uh, but ever since then the number of covid 19 cases have been increasing and uh, with an increased rate india cases near the 50000 mark with 3900 new cases 195 deaths reported in the last 24 hours do you see a lockdown 4.0 and if that happens would it be an economic calamity for the country what are your thoughts madhu okay so <clears throat> no one knows the right answer right i mean when president donald trump you know back in the united states i think when this outbreak started i think he made a statement that uh, you know the cure you know can't be worse than the disease you know back then people mocked him you know they said you know he's not being sensitive etc but now i think most of the economies are going that that way i think even in india i think uh, the government is going to be divided around you know how do you keep the economy running versus how do you safeguard and i think two things are going to evolve i think consumers or citizens are going to self embrace safety precautions uh what we're seeing right now in you know post relaxation of 2.0 is that pent up frustration which we also saw in china right the frustration of being locked down for an extended period people are just rushing out to shop you know be it liquor be it merchandise and that's exactly what we're seeing in united states we started opening few of our stores um you know on friday and we we were comping positive compared to last year same time right so that is the pent up frustration so that's going to go up and i don't see a complete lockdown happening uh, because then you're going to kill the economy and then the cure is going to be worse than the disease uh, and i see citizens embracing more safety precautions but um, i think that's where i think as as big retailers we have to you know continue to be innovative around contactless and safe shopping um, and think innovative uh, from an omni channel standpoint and and i want the audience to please uh, uh, participate and comment their views uh, whether they think lockdown 4.0 is a valid uh, solution if the case is increased uh, anil your thoughts please well uh, rusum i guess um, lockdown 4.0 might come but then actually i don't think even the government can't afford right now for a, a universal uh, you know a lockdown right now like what madhu was also alluding to um there were actually like you know hundreds of districts you know which were completely affected by covid right and then you know kind of there were uh, you know people were already trying to ask actually why are you locking us down because somewhere else you know thousands of kilometers you know there is probably some uh, virus and all those things right so what government has actually very cleverly done is they have educated the larger community in fact to a greater extent i mean i was just sitting with my brother in law and then my sister yesterday you know they are also uh, both are doctors and then they are actually on their aptha mitra uh, the 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 you know, the consulting medical consulting actually app that the karnataka government has actually put through and i was witnessing actually a uh, quite a few calls in a span of around 2 to 3 hours people calling for normal cold and one so on right i mean i think government has actually done some uh, taken some steps very very smartly it is actually educating consumer sorry the community and then saying okay if you have a normal cold and flu what do you want to do and then if you really have a corona symptoms what should you do in fact so i guess they are leaving now the decisions to the community larger community because let's say entire bangalore bangalore rural and then mysore they are on red zone but look at bangalore i mean look at bangalore the activities are in full zoom in fact but having said that lot of people are taking care they are maintaining the social distancing and so on so they are actually on the self care which is probably the best model probably for government to handle this in the longer duration so fodato might come but then with a limited restriction with a local lockdown areas rather than a larger global kind of a thing what has happened in the 2.0 or 3.0 actually but this is my view why lockdown 4.0 we have taken enough time to prepare and we now know and even there was a report by who that says that there might be no cure for uh, corona and now we know who are the people what's the age group are being affected 65 plus uh, with enough uh, covid cure centers and and all the preparedness that we took over the last 30 days i think uh, if we do again a lockdown 4.0 there might be uh, economic uh, costs that the economy that the country has to pay uh, bala your thoughts on this yeah i think uh, nobody knows the complete right answer right and therefore uh, probably the right at least theoretical answer is we need to be agile Uh, and quickly respond to the situations right uh, and i think i mean getting to specifics probably the way we need to go is kind of micro location based action education people eventually need to realize what is their impact 
and we must hope as a community we re respond properly right i think uh, uh, that decentralization and self responsibility eventually would be the only answer if this is going to be long drawn right that, 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 i think that, 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 that's your thoughts please yeah see is i agree with this almost everybody that it is very difficult to actually predict what will happen right uh, but one thing is there is uh, uh, government has opened up because of the economic reasons they had no choice right because eventually economy has to be right. has to move on. but i think the response which you have seen uh, at least what if whatever i am seeing the news report it doesn't look very encouraging right because in a country like india what happens is because if you see the real situation has not changed did we find a corona cure no right did we have basically did we have we developed the herd immunity no so actually if you see nothing has changed from march till now but if you see if you go to the market i went to market yesterday and it was like like pre march it was like a february uh, traffic on the road right it like basically nothing has happened so though even though government is educating uh, the on the ground level a lot of people are actually either they became very frustrated even the educated ones but even non educated ones they are totally ignoring it so situation at the so the, my take on this i mean though i'm not sure but my take on this is there will be lockdown 4.0 but it cannot happen till the basically in, the way it has happened for lockdown 1 and lockdown 2 uh, the government will allow basically uh, government will basically categorize essential services more clearly rather than just the grocery and the medical they will add on to few other categories but they will stop so many other categories categories like liquor and so many other things they will stop it so i think the lockdown 4 may come if the if the trend will continue and i think it will happen because i don't think uh, i don't think the cure is going to come in the next one month or two months three months uh, and i i slightly have a different view that uh, i don't think our country is that prepared even though we got two three months we got actually time though there has been progress but the, the amount of people which india has right uh, and and the type of when we are a poor country so i don't think we are that prepared so government may not take that chance they might actually try to trying to contain the situation but lit, not exactly like lock, lockdown 1 and 2 but yeah they might but exactly not like they will actually curtail more things from lockdown 3 also so it will be somewhere between the lockdown 2 and lockdown 3 uh kartikeyan uh, i'd want to ask you do you do you prefer the extension of lockdown 3.0 then with all the relaxations so, that were given in uh, 3.0 do you prefer uh, the extension of it i'm sure 1 uh, and 2 is what nobody wants how about 3 uh, is that to me razum yes yes cut okay yes. uh well uh, you know i'll uh, i i remember the saying uh, what uh, narayan murthy said that you don't uh, burn the house to catch the rat though it's the year of the rat so we uh, really need to look at how uh, you know what are the next steps that we take uh yes economy is important we been seeing a uh, lot of issues uh, at especially at the bottom of the pyramid having said that uh, rajum i would also uh, mention that this is the time when uh, you know and we we are looking at, we are facing that at, at our organizations uh, among the board and all having and having faith in the leadership so any action uh, that has been mentioned by the leader we adhere to it and we work and create workability in that scenario within our organizations um, within the ecosystem that we are in uh, that's what's most important uh, how i look at uh, this situation if you ask me whether uh, lo lockdown 4 uh, should happen uh, the clear answer is no uh, i would say that uh, well uh, we need to look at ways in terms of how we can have the been running i will quote an example uh, of singapore what they did is they started opening new categories and that's what we need to start looking so uh, and we feel that uh, today uh, you know uh, the government is looking at how the other geographies have responded uh, take some uh, you know uh, options from that and the best possible workable solution for indian market uh, that is how we need to uh, thing i would say is that yes uh, to all the government norms starting off with arogya setu because yes you have information at your fingertips how you use the information social distancing uh, managing the communicate right um, 
and uh, seeing how you know you take business ahead uh <clears throat> thank you uh, anil bhai next question to you and since we are running short of time i i want to just ask this question to you uh before corona a lot of promising supply chain technology startups were in the focus and their innovation received a lot of praise do you think these technology startups with the kind of risks that that are now perceived in our minds do you think these startups will continue to enjoy the same or with risks and crisis perspectives in mind the party is over no not really not necessarily the part is over i guess you know only thing is it will again uh, what i said earlier survive the fittest probably whoever is a smart enough and whoever is actually able to do the journey with you and on a win win situation rather than a subscription you know outright or actually you know a, a, an outright licensing model and things like that whoever has actually got a good idea who can actually walk the talk with you you know walk the process with you they will continue to have uh, probably the prominence and also business opportunity because let's understand i mean this covid has also kind of questioned lot of our um, you know a deeply embedded actually value system you know deeply embedded processes in fact whether they were right or wrong uh, we were actually following because we never had time to kind of take a pause and look at it actually i mean how many of us you know would have had at least you know 24 hours or a weeks time actually to kind of pause and then look at our entire business actually but this is obviously right now where we can do that and we are doing it also so the startup the smart startup with lot of creative or innovative ideas and so on will continue to probably thrive only thing is there will be probably far and few rather than you know uh, probably you know uh, lots of them uh, pre covid uh, is probably my take on that Madhu, what are your uh, recommendations to the smart startups? I think I, I'm in complete agreement with Vikas. You know, uh, sorry, with Anil. But um, you know, since we are closing this, you know, status, I quickly saw a question from Vikas Chauhan. And considering this discussion is about retail, if brick and mortar stores continues disappearing at the current rate, will omni channel be relevant? Now, a big component of omni channel is having brick and mortar stores. You know, one of the main reasons why brick and mortar stores have struggled is because, okay. as businesses shift online, you know, your your cost of operating a store is no more viable. And I think a solution to that is, I strongly believe, at least in North America, stores are way too large. You know, most of our stores are hundred thousand plus square foot. You don't need such large stores. So you have to really shrink the real estate. You see. a lot on rental uh, and at the same time you need to convert your stores into experience centers that you can't offer online so this becomes you know can you can you have you know style consultants you know alteration services yoga classes cooking classes so you become make your store as an interaction point that you can't offer in the online reduce footprint and that way stores will continue to be relevant in the future and it's a important part to be on my channel thank you so yep. much uh bala i move i want to move on to next question with you uh, again we are running short of time uh, uh, see a predominant reason why cpo innovation got established as a neutral knowledge and news platform was to provide access to supply chain practitioners with not only promising knowledge but also delivering actionable prescription and i'm asking my next question with our that very mission in mind uh, now that we are in lockdown 3.0 and and several manufacturing companies resume operations many retailers open shops the ground reality reality still on the retail front was a mixed bag with several shops reopening after days of being shut but some had to be closed early again due to the intervention by local authorities or some reason this this development for sure has come out after a recent uh, notification uh, last friday from the union home ministry which permitted companies to resume manufacturing operations and even reopening of shops even in the red green and orange zones with certain riders uh, how do you think the supply chain leaders at retail companies can chart a path to the next normal amid all this uncertainty and build resilience returning to a full supply chain effectiveness yeah so uh, one way to look at this entire thing is while we don't know in what shape the next crisis will emerge uh, the way to look at us and there is uh, in, in the technical parallels there is something called as chaos engineering right uh, mm -hmm. where we don't think too much in terms of what is the form and shape of the crisis right but uh, given complex ecosystems in which we operate uh, the way we look at this is it's not whether a new crisis will occur uh, but when right and therefore kind of induce experimental chaos right uh, some of the things which we do in our technology field is 
um, and just to make it uh, simple for uh, the audience, we literally pull wires, shut down servers, uh, and see how does our systems behave when consciously we do break out things, right? Those are some of the practices we should come across in other domains and industries as well. We need to test our resilience to see that when parts of our systems are not effective, does the system as a whole fail or are we resilient, right? And in fact, uh, uh, there is a concept called as anti-fragile, right? Because we're talking about black swan and uh, uh, anti-fragility was the recommendation by uh, Nasib Taleb uh, as an answer to how we deal with black swans, right? So th those are some of the concepts okay. which we should apply and look at how do we deal with these kind of situations, right? We don't have to worry whether it's the next pandemic or a next war, but if we go with an assumption that something could go wrong, how do we make ourselves a little more robust and anti-fragile? I think those are the broader things which we should start thinking. Virendra, your thoughts, please. Yeah, so I think uh, Abala and Madhu, they already summarized actually quite a few things. I'll try to basically, mm -hmm. Uh, add few things, right? Uh, while doing all these things, we should not forget to go to the basics. As we said, right, just fair to summarize, uh, companies have to adopt a way to actually listen to the customer in basically more and more engaging way. Uh, basically, is a store level demand or basically more granular demand uh, or basically some sort of demand driven MRP approach. Uh, yeah, basically, we need to have a unique, unified response to the customer consumer demand, right? All supply chain function should be based on that consumer demand. It cannot remain on basically traditional approaches of sales and operation planning and IBP, uh, where basically the once the demand is there, supply plan, procurement plan, and distribution plan gets aligned. Uh, the more challenges if the consumer demand changes, how quickly we can readjust to this, right? Most of the companies, companies in the pre-corona environment were only adjusting their distribution plan. Now, actually, more important is to basically align all the supply plan, procurement plan, and distribution plan. And that will require some investment in technology, uh, some rapid what if capability. Uh, so, so basically, somebody only signal that matters is that consumer demand. And then uh, that is in line with basically the demand driven, basically the planning function. Another very important thing, right, which uh, which is which was applicable in pre-corona environment. And now this is the time to fix it. Then this is the first chapter what we read in, in the, any, the, any of the B school in the supply chain management. That the, all the function should be aligned towards a simple common goal of the company. For example, in the traditional systems, purchasing actually looks for cost advantage and the bigger lot size. Production also needs bigger lot size. Uh, that is no longer a way yeah. to manage supply chain. In this situation, everyone should be agreed to the common goal where we can operate with a very lean system, maybe it's JIT, or basically having a minimal inventory wherever JIT is not possible, and basically aligned to the consumer demand. We cannot say that we uh, manufacturing cannot say that I, I want to run with this longer manufacturing size because I will be having change or losses. They have to figure out a way to actually minimize change or losses. Unless they will become lean, they cannot never actually respond to this situation. So I think we can go to back to the, uh, fix on all these things, leverage the technology, and basically get ready for future. Anil, uh, your views on this, please. Well, uh, I guess, you know, uh, most of the things, you know, I think it was covered in, in fact, I guess, um, uh, very, very, you know, specifically looking at uh, agility across the, you know, entire business, you know, I guess, and also having a, a common team or actually a one team rather than uh, trying to actually, you know, cater to various, you know, groups or actually, you know, uh, the cellular or isolation actually, you know, uh, what was, what used to happen in the past. So I guess we can learn some of these things generally from the automotive industry. Automotive industry supply chain is probably one of the most robust and then well proven over the decades and so on. I, I guess, you know, we need to get into some of those, uh, you know, best practices also. In, in which case you share the information, you know, along, you know, along with all your, uh, you know, stakeholders and so on, share the information in real time and kind of, you know, keep them actually uh, abreast with all the happenings in fact. And, uh, and also, as I said earlier, you know, be true with your consumers as well as as well as with your partners you know don't promise don't over promise to actually consumers and then unnecessarily build expectation and like what earlier Madhu said Omni is going to become probably more and more uh, relevant actually because we actually always say you you know see us anywhere access anywhere we will deliver it to you whether it's your doorstep or a store or a locker or actually you know your uh, society or a workplace that kind of a thing is going to become more and more important because Store obviously is going to be 
seen a common place of maybe you want to go and then have a look at variety or to do the return or you want to actually you know just uh, go and look at the you know the season launch whatever but then come back home and then look at the catalog in a very leisured uh, you know a uh, you know leisured actually atmosphere and then kind of you know order whatever you want so i think things are definitely going to change and consumer is expecting uh, a little bit more relaxed mode before she going and ordering those things because as we said earlier um the party is not going on tonight party is not there on a friday night so you know it's going to be a long time before they get into that mode so therefore i guess agility by understanding the consumer uh, you know consumer actually the behavior a consumer expectation is probably the key right now to kind of navigate this situation now i think we've already covered a good uh, angle of this question so i'd move on to the last uh rezo we can't hear you i think you went on mute uh my bad yes yeah so, it's better now. i think i think what i was saying is that we are now onto the last uh, uh, few minutes of the show today and and with that i think a, a good angle of this question has been covered now going on to the last part of the show i'd want to start with kartikeyan uh kartikeyan the global focus on covid-19 as as we already have discussed has shifted the priorities for all businesses and as well individuals globally now as we draw towards uh, the last part i want i quickly want to do a quick round robin on probably your words your final words of advice to everybody in terms of one of the things that you will invite retail leaders retail supply chain leaders to start doing and one thing that you would want them to stop doing okay uh in fact uh, what needs to be done uh, is uh, there on top of my mind so uh when we are uh, enhancing our skills uh, you know uh, realigning the sops i would say uh, we should also look at uh, exercising our not just our uh, mind and body but also our soul so that's one thing that i would say in terms of not doing uh, i would say is uh, well i would say is uh, uh too much of moral policing now when i say that i i i see a, you know a lot of that uh, really coming up uh it's about uh, inducing the culture that you know uh, everyone is mindful and takes the necessary steps themselves and focuses towards the common goal of the organization and i would say that uh, well i it's uh, not rather than saying not doing i would say uh, be more kind uh, to the each to each and everyone in your ecosystem in the current scenario is what i would say thanks virendra your thoughts please yes yeah, so i will keep it very simple uh, rajan i think what we need to do is in this time supply chain leaders need to be ek is creative and as innovative as possible they should look for newer ways of doing things maybe work from home could be a new norm right which can help improve productivity just for an example they need to become basically leaner and they need to be they need to be respond uh my advice to basically supply chain leaders would be uh though it's important to have a long term vision don't plan too long term it's very important to plan it basically on quarter or basically a half yearly basis and then basically see how the things work and then plan for basically future it's it this is not a time to basically have a very long to be very certain about a very long term vision we need to basically look for basically we need to be more granular and plan for maybe one or two quarter and see how things go balakrishnan your thoughts on this piece yeah i'll keep it simple i would say always think about global optimization think about uh, larger stakeholders even beyond shareholders right and eventually believe that uh, if you do the right things for the society and the customers uh, as an organization you will strive and thrive right anything else is i don't do <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, anil your closing comment please uh well i guess um i would rather uh, you know uh, suggest actually all our counterparts to be uh, close to reality be realistic in fact and also realistic with not only your own uh, capabilities but also realistic with the customer uh, expectations and so on so don't go don't become unreasonable don't become too greedy whatever so stay close to the reality that's one thing what i would suggest what i would strongly actually recommend again is actually the the counting war that we had been actually used to all get in fact i mean thanks to all the online or the new e-commerce companies you know a few years ago i think 
unsustainable level of discounting and unsustainable levels of actually SLA service level agreement. You know, we will do the next day delivery, we'll do same day delivery, and all that. I mean, let's understand. I mean, apart from bread, butter, milk, uh, banana, I mean, there is there is nothing really. I mean, you can wait for another day. I mean, nothing is going to fall likely on you. So that way, please do actually get get into this discounting business and also setting unreasonable expectations on supply chain capabilities. Stay close to the reality. Thank you. Nicely said. I think I'm, I'm the last. So I would I would close off saying I think uh, inventory has been a huge problem for retailers. I think this is a great opportunity to you know reduce that as well as reduce the carbon footprint. I think all retailers contributing can make Earth a better place. A little philosophical. Uh, and the last one is uh, I think omni channel. Right. Uh, convert your stores into experience centers, keeping safety in mind. Yeah. Madhu, one thing that you recommend uh, supply chain leaders to stop doing. uh inventory you know i think we pile up way too much inventory uh, so if you can be more just in time uh, where you have a more accurate sense of demand uh, i think that will help us a lot all right thank you i think with that we've covered uh, a lot of our agenda and the questions that we were not able to really answer we'd be doing a post show post event report uh, wherein uh, we'd be answering all the questions and uh, the facts that we discussed will be open uh, for public to view and download Uh, on cpinnovation.com uh, thank you everyone thank you madhu anil kartikeyan virendra uh, uh, and bala uh, i think your uh, participation uh, went over two hours today and this was really a gift to the entire supply chain industry uh, the video will be available on demand for everybody and would be shared with uh, all of those who have registered for the show uh, i'd want to uh, thank you our audience again today for uh, staying with us for over two hours uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll be up again next week for another informative show Thank you so much. This is Rizum Rajan uh, signing off for the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye.